to Journey to Joy Live. I am Dr. Enjoy, and this is Psychic Life. Psychic Life. I'm the owner of Enjoy Life Living in Full Empowerment LLC. And I've been doing these live weekly sessions ever since the beginning of July, because July was Minority Mental Health Awareness Month. And now in August, we're going back to school. So we've been talking about back to school and it was my son's idea to <laughs> talk about back to school stress and all of the things that come with going back to school. Now we're going to talk about bullying. Well, before we get into bullying, I don't know. I think there's a little bit more we want to talk about with just like the regular back to school stress before we dive into bullying. Because, you know, well, just a recap from last week, right? So we talked about, you know, how to get rid of like that anxiety and that stress, mm-hmm. planning ahead. A lot of times we procrastinate. I'm looking at you because, you know, you're the one in the room. I say you procrastinate. I can procrastinate too. But anyhow, planning ahead, keeping an agenda. They give you an agenda or is that your agenda? No. Well, no, yeah, it's my agenda. Oh, we, we, his we TT advises. Suffice. Thank you, TT. I didn't know if it was yours in a teacher case. But actually writing your assignments down in your agenda and looking back at it. There's a reason why it's written down so you can look back at it and know your assignments. And there's all these syllabi that I have to sign every day, it seems like. So there's all of those I have to sign and, you know, paying attention to that because all the information is there. When you um, are trying to figure out what to do as far as your class or what's expected, it's all in the syllabi or the syllabus. In that case, I think we're using the singular. Anyhow, planning ahead is key and not procrastinating. And I think that, you know, even though kids have back to school stress, parents have back to school stress too. For instance, we're busy. You might have multiple kids. If you have a toddler and a baby in the house, you're trying to deal with them. And you have this wonderful, handsome sixth grader who says, well, I need help. And then I'm like, what do you need help with? And it's changing what? Nine, no, improper fractions to what is this? mixed numbers. It's it's like a no. It's a recap. Right. So you may not even know that. So how do you help your sixth grader? One thing I did do, I saw this book. I think I got it from Barnes and Nobles. I got it a few years ago, but we're just now cracking it open. It's called The Complete Middle School Study Guide. Everything you need to ace math in one big fat notebook. So they have these for different levels of math and for different subjects. So this is actually helpful because I don't know how to teach that stuff, but you went to it and it actually helped you when you had questions. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's one way, but obviously teachers have office hours and that's another, that's another way when you don't know how to do things. You even had a teacher last week that was sent home a family. I forget what it was called, but it was for the family to read to help teach about that subject. Any other back to school stressors, uh, anxieties that kids might go through or... No, not that I need to talk about. That you need to talk about. You really want to jump into bullying. He really wants to jump into bullying. I think I think you thought today was all about bullying. That's okay. We'll do it. So what is bullying? Bullying is a thing that people put in your head, words in your head to discourage you and things like that to like mentally break you down. That's true. Yeah, bullying can mentally break you down. Bullying can happen at school, in person, or even if you're homebound and you have cyberbullying. People from school that are virtually your classmates bullying you or cyberbullying could be from social media. So it may not be Facebook because kids aren't really on Facebook, but TikTok, because you can send messages on TikTok, Instagram. What else? I found out. That you can send messages on roadblocks. Roadblocks. What is it? Roadblock. 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 I don't know. I get it mixed up with Robux because you always ask me for (laughs) Robux. But (laughs) you can send messages on that. So it's really also about understanding what your kid has on their phone, what apps they have, and what kinds of methods can they send messages. Even dual. Dual meet. The Google. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys were in like a video chat or group chat last year. And those are ways that someone could use bullying. iPhones with the uh, video chats, whatever. There's so many different ways. So those are all the methods that you can bully. You mentioned mentally breaking you down. People trying to get inside your head. Is there also a different kind of bullying? 
Cyberbullying? So we mentioned the cyberbullying. So someone online saying things about you. Physical bullying. Someone straight up trying to beat you up. Pushing you. Stealing stuff from you. Taking your, your lunch money. Tripping you. Taking your books and ripping it up. Just straight up beating you up. I mean, you see movies where people like get their underwear pulled over their head, which I don't think that's actually possible, but that happens in movies. Or stuffing them inside the, the locker. Yeah. I think it happens. I'm just saying there's physical bullying too, or someone pushing on you and things like that. And growing up, we used to say sticks and stones don't break my will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. There's two things to that because yeah, that's nice that words will never hurt you. And I think you would say that words don't hurt you. But technically they do. They can hurt me. They can hurt you. Yeah. Right. Like bullying can mentally break you down. Is anybody, you don't have to say names, but have you witnessed anybody being bullied? No. If you did, what do you think you should do? What's your stance? What would you do or what should you do? Kind of just chill out and just like stop doing what they're doing. So it is nice that if you see someone getting bullied to actually uh, try to stop it, if you're comfortable, you don't have to, you can go find someone who's responsible, like a teacher or someone who obviously an adult, a counselor and say, Hey, you know, someone's giving trouble. And I don't know if that's a whole like snitch code thing that you're not supposed to do, but I think it's important to stand up for other people if they feel like they can't stand up for themselves. So it's nice to, to be there for others. Dealing with bullying is very important. There's two sides of it. There's the the side of let's stop the bullies, let's advocate for my child, you know, let's talk to the teacher, let's talk to the school, let's talk to the principal, let's talk to the advisor, whoever. Unfortunately, bullying is going to keep happening. Uh, it may stop with that particular kid. It just happens in life. There's there's adults that get bullied at work. Some people get bullied at church. Bullying happens. So if it's going to continue to happen, what should we do? Well, for parents, they can um, physically build them up to be like a better person so they won't get like destroyed so easily. Wow. Like, so they... Physically build their kids up so they won't get mentally destroyed so easily. That's great. Yeah. And not to say it's the parent's fault. That's not what you mean. But that's a way that us as parents can help our kids is to mentally build them up by giving them positive affirmations. We talked about that last week. Mm -hmm. And then also having them learn how to say positive affirmations to themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the reason why I brought this book, yay, this is the book I wanted to show off last week. It's called Just Like Your Daddy. And it, this is Legend book, my two-year-old. So it happens to have positive affirmations at the end. You want to read those and read them really strong. <laughs> it says, I am safe. I am brave. I am strong. I am blessed. I am worthy. I am enough. I am capable. I am healthy. I am deserving. And I am confident. And also, I am loved. Imagine if you say that to yourself every morning, throughout the day, every night, and you're constantly thinking this about yourself. If somebody comes up to you and says, you're ugly, I don't like you, I hate you, why aren't you wearing these clothes? And you're constantly thinking these positive things, you're just going to look at them like, what's wrong with you? Why are you talking to me that way? And, and it, it just will bounce off. And there's that. Words will never hurt me, thing. if you build them up. There's different reasons why someone someone asked me before coming live. I told you all to come with me with your questions, even before coming live or during live. But what makes a person be a bully? Who becomes a bully? For the most part, as a child psychiatrist, I see kids who've been bullied. I see kids who are bullies. I even had a kid say, I just don't care. I want to hurt people. I want to hurt their feelings. And it just makes them insecure about themselves. Yeah. It makes the other person insecure or they're already insecure. No, they're already insecure. So they just make, they just take it out on others. They're already insecure. So they take it out on others. That's exactly right. So maybe that bully has been through something. Maybe he's been, he or she's been abused or they have been abused. 
maybe they only have one parent and they've been abandoned by the other parent. And they're seeing that this child has two parents and they have this or they have that. There must be something lacking or some type of neglect or some type of hurt that they've been through. Misery loves company. They want to bring you down with them. Okay. So not to say that we talked about clever comebacks last week, not to say that a clever comeback would be, well, that's why you don't have a mom. No, you wouldn't want to do that and talk about them. I mean, maybe you want to just get them alone and say, you know, what happened? What happened to you? Why, why do you want to bring others down? Do you feel down or give them a compliment? You ever thought about giving your bully a compliment? They say like, oh, your hair sucks. And you be like, I like your hair. You're beautiful. I like your smile. Can you imagine? They're probably like, what? They definitely throw them off. So like saying positive things to yourself and saying them to others too. There's a point where when, if you wonder if your child is being bullied, some people might ask, well, how do I know they're being bullied? How do I approach it? I mean, if you actively talk to them every day, how was school? And then even like address like certain parts, like what made you happy today? What made you sad today? What made you stressed today? And just because sometimes how was school? You don't get that, that answer right away. Uh, but when you ask those questions, you're constantly inviting them to talk to you about things that are going on. I feel like you talk to, to your dad and I about stuff, right? When we ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you ever didn't, you know, hopefully there's other people that your child can talk to. But asking them those questions and hopefully they will talk to you. If after talking to them and trying to advocate for them at the school, if that doesn't help and your child is showing signs of needing more help, what are some signs of needing more help? Let's see if you know. Like more attention or just more being talked to more. Or if that doesn't work, you know, just um, going to a counselor at your school. Um, they can help you um, get through some stuff, you know. Have some de stressors that some you know those like fidget toys that help you like de stress. Yeah, you're just saying all the right things. That's why I'm smiling. I didn't even expect you to say that. Okay, um, so yeah, fidget toys, things that you can go to, so you can go and talk to a counselor. So there's the school counselor. Sometimes uh, bullying may really, really get to a child. They're not sleeping. Um, they're not eating. They don't want to go to school. And that's a whole nother thing. When kids are going through something, they may not always tell you, but the signs show through their physical. So like getting a stomach ache can be a sign of anxiety or depression. Mm -hmm. If they constantly don't want to go to school, I don't want to go to school. I don't want to go to school, but they're not saying maybe there's something going on with them. And things that can happen through social media, some kids, you know, may batter them or bully them so much that they start to feel like, they don't want to live. That's happened. So sometimes you might have to go see professional help. So that's beyond the counselor at school. That is a therapy. psychiatrist like me, or that's therapy. It's okay, you know, if you have to send your child to see a child psychiatrist, and it doesn't mean they'll automatically be on medication. It just means it's offering them the opportunity to talk about it. Because like I said, sometimes you can't stop the bullying or get rid of the bullying, but you can do what it takes to build them up and heal them. That's where the therapy comes in and having them talk about it and they can learn different strategies how to deal with it. Clever comebacks is one of them. Positive affirmations and building up your self-esteem is obviously other ways. If a child does need medication, if you know they are having so much anxiety to the point where they refuse to go to school or they have stomach aches, headaches, that's another thing, or they're not eating, or they're eating too much. I have an um, example yeah. for what you said, like with the bullying, it just doesn't go away. So it's like, think of it as a cut. It doesn't go away. It heals. It, it just, it, it's still there. It doesn't, like, you know, you know what I mean? Like with scars. Like scar. Yeah, it's still there, but you know, it, it heals over time. I like that because... In this case, you're talking about like maybe the effects of bullying, right? So like yeah. bullying, you know, may be like a one-time thing, but it could stay with that person and there could be mental scars. And that's a lot of time with trauma. Bullying is actually under trauma. Someone talking about you, someone mentally abusing you, emotionally abusing you, things that they say to bring you down, that's a trauma. So that can stay with you. Those scars can stay. Mm -hmm. And so therapy can help heal that.
I was saying that as far as if they need medication, if they're somehow uh, the grades are slipping and not doing so well, uh, that could be a reason to seek help as well. So yeah, bullying is huge. And I think the main take home here is building our kids up, making them stronger, giving them attention. You mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Praising our kids. Or praying, yeah. Praying Praying. with our kids. Mm -hmm. Spending time with them. Even like if it's 10 minutes that you have with your kids, spending that quality time with them. Making sure it's just you and them, looking at them in their face, whatever they want to do for that 10 minutes, praising them, respecting them, inspiring them, doing all those things. Even if it's just for 10 minutes, that helps build them up. Anything else? I don't think we have any questions. I thought I had. I see something here. Let's see. If these behaviors are not checked, sometimes these behaviors are transferred into their adulthood. Exactly. So that is like what the trauma and like what the scar you were saying, having those mental scars. Sometimes when you are traumatized as a child, it makes you susceptible to more trauma because of what it does to you as a person. And then it carry it, it carries through your life. It carries through your life. And because you don't have self-worth, self-respect, you end up in relationships where you they beat you up and they disrespect you and that kind of thing because you don't know what your worth is. You don't know what you should get. So yeah, it starts with childhood. And that's why I went into child psychiatry because I want to be able to start young and help building these kids up. Yeah. Yay. We actually have our first comment. So yeah, come uh, every day, not every day, <laughs> every Thursday at seven, Journey to Joy Live you can ask us questions beforehand or ask during like and follow us. SciKid is on YouTube as SciKid Life. And you can I, ask me questions too. You can ask him questions. He, he wants to build up his following too. That's for sure. He wants me to post all these videos. And I'm, I guess I got to give you your phone at some point during the week so you can post. That's a whole another thing. The, the device, right? Taking away phones and stuff. He's not in trouble. I just don't let him have it during the yeah, week. Yeah, just so the focus. focus. Yeah, no. yeah. My counselor hates Social media. Well, social media. Well, yeah, some like TikTok. She does, well, she just doesn't like it. She doesn't prefer it at school. Especially not at school. Yeah. Cause you, she thinks it's just a problem. And especially when you have it on the bus too. Cause they allow you to have it on the bus. Really? Mm-hmm. I don't like it either. And I don't know if I'm over strict, but I, you're fine. We just get scared that something's going to happen. Like, we just think the worst and we're just like, we don't want you on social media because somebody's going to come get you and kidnap you. And we just think of the worst. <laughs> so it's probably not going to happen, but that's why we have such restrictions. But you can be on the roadblocks or whatever. Okay. So uh, we were talking about where to follow us on Insta- Instagram. I'm Dr. Enjoy Life or Dr. Dot Enjoy Dot Life. And he's on YouTube and I'm on YouTube as well. So anyhow, thank you. You coming back next week or we, we done drew this uh, subject out. No. I guess we'll no. see. You like talking. We'll have to think of what subject. Tell us what subject. What y'all want to hear about yes. as far as school and what do you want to hear from Psyche? Thank you. Bye.